We're now going to go through the three reservoirs problem. Um, this is the kind of problem that you'll, it's in the FE handbook, it's in your textbook, so you might see it on the FE. Um, it's the kind of problem that professors like to come up with, but it really, <laughs> I don't think it has any practical application. So I kind of hate to even talk about it, but since it might be on the FE, I might as well go through it. Um, so here is the problem. You have three reservoirs connected by pipes and a junction. Um, let's put some numbers to this. So you've got the elevation of water in each of the reservoirs, and you've got information about the pipes, their diameter, their length, their friction factor. Um, let me stop right there. Notice the friction factor. We've specified the friction factor. So that's regardless of what velocity is going through the pipe. This is another way you can you can not use the Moody diagram. You, you can deal with these head losses and avoid the Moody diagram as if you just specify a friction factor regardless of whatever, whatever the velocity is. It's not precisely correct, but it's another way um, people simplify the problem so it's solvable. So anyway, we've got the elevation of water in the three reservoirs. We've got three pipes connecting them with a junction. What is the flow rate in each of the pipes? and that flow rate is going to depend on all of those numbers that you see on the board or on the screen. Um, another thing I want to point out is it's pretty obvious that water is flowing out of reservoir 1, right? and water is flowing into reservoir 3. So pipe 3, water is flowing from the junction into the reservoir. Pipe 1, it's flowing from the reservoir to the junction. For pipe two, it's not clear which way, which direction water is flowing. It, it could be flowing out of the reservoir or into the reservoir, depending on all those numbers on the board. So there's a number of ways to solve this. Your textbook actually solves it directly, and it's, it's pretty ugly, if I remember correctly. Um, other textbooks, and the way I learned to solve this is with iteration. And since we've done some iteration already, I, I think I'm going to teach you this iter iterative method. Um, in this method, we assume a total head at the junction. And then once we know the total head at the junction, we can calculate the flow rate in each of the three pipes. And then we can check conservation of mass. We know at that junction all the flow coming in has to equal all the flow going out. And if that's not true, then our assumption is wrong. We've got to go back and iterate. OK, so let's set up our flow equations for each of the pipes. If we look at from reservoir A to junction D, we can write the energy equation at those points. In the reservoir, pressure and velocity are zero. There's no pump. And at the junction, instead of evaluating each of those terms, we're just going to talk about the total head at that point. So the sum of those three things is equal to the total head, and that's what we're going to work with. So it re the equation reduces to this. We're going to use the darcy Weisbeck equation for head loss. And that gives us this equation for velocity. So we can calculate the velocity at each of the, in each of the pipes simply as a function of those changes in head and the friction factor in L and the diameter. Note you can also do this with the Hayes and Williams equation. You just have a different velocity equation that you would be using. OK, here's our problem again. I'm going to assume the head at the junction is 70. It just has to be somewhere between 50 and 100. Um, but what I guess is just pretty random. So I'm just going to pick 70. Note that since I picked 70 and the elevation of the water in the reservoir is 70, our flow rate in pipe 2 is 0 because they're at the same elevation. So that um, simplifies, that gives us one less thing to calculate. <clears throat> so the flow in 1 is then can then be calculated using that equation we just derived. The change in head is simply 100 minus 70. That gives us a velocity of 9.8 and a certain flow rate. The velocity in pipe 3 
<clears throat> now water is flowing from the junction into the reservoir. The change in head is 70 minus 50, which gives us a velocity and a flow rate. Now, we can look at conservation of mass, and it's pretty clear that the flow rate entering the junction is much higher than the flow rate exiting the junction. So, it was a bad assumption. I've got too much flow in pipe one. My next assumption should be higher. So, I started out knowing that the head was somewhere between 50 and 100. Now I know it's somewhere between 70 and 100. So this is that bracketing method which we dealt with before when we were iterating with the Moody diagram. It's a common numerical methods approach and we're going to use it here. So we're just going to keep decreasing that bracket until we're, we get a number. So now I'm between 70 and 100. I'm going to pick 90. Same equations. The velocity in pipe 1 can be calculated with 100 minus 90 is 10. That gives us a velocity and a flow rate. <clears throat> in pipe 2, now it's flowing from the junction into reservoir B. So in pipe 2, it's, seven, it's 90 minus 70, or, tw or a head drop of 20, which gives us a velocity and a flow rate. And in pipe 3, we've got... Um, 90 minus 50, which is a head drop of 40, and that gives us a velocity and a flow rate. We check conservation of mass, and the flow rate exiting reservoir A is much less than the sum of the flow rates that are entering B and C. Okay, so I went too high. I've got too much. I don't have enough flow coming out of reservoir A. I got to drop D to get more flow out of there. So now I'm somewhere between 70 and 90. So let's pick 80, go through all those calculations again. And I'm getting closer, but I'm still, I still don't get enough flow out of pipe, out of reservoir A. So let's go lower again. Now I'm be somewhere between 70 and 80, so why not pick 75? Now I'm getting a little too much flow out of pipe 1. So I got to go higher, so somewhere between 75 and 80. Let's pick 78. <clears throat> Still a little too much flow coming out of pipe one. So I got to go higher, somewhere between 78 and 80. Let's try 79. Not enough flow coming out. So let's go a little lower, 78.5. Still not enough flow coming out. Let's go a little bit lower. 78.3 and that nails it. So I get the flow rate coming out of pipe one is exactly equal to the flow rates going into um, reservoirs B and C, at least using only three significant digits. So that's one way to solve the three reservoirs problem. Um, there you go.